Welcome back to The Real News Network. We're in Jerusalem. We're talking with Tom Segev. He's the author of 1967, Israel, the War, and the Year that Transformed the Middle East. So to young Palestinians, you're saying their only best realistic choice is a better occupation. And you know they're not going to accept it. I'm, I'm mostly talking to Israelis, not to Palestinians. But um, I would tell to Israelis on two levels, if you want, on a polemic, idealistic, futuristic level, I would say, let's end the occupation. Let's end it today. It's no good. Let's dismantle the settlements. It's no good. Bring all settlers home. Let's go for the 1967 border. Let's go for power sharing in Jerusalem. Let's go for a two-state solution. Okay? I've said all that. It doesn't mean much because it won't be in the near future. I don't believe that it's possible. I want it very much, but I don't believe that it's possible. So I'm saying, so what do we do in the meantime? And I'm saying that in the meantime, there are many ways to diminish the uh, systematic violations of the human rights of the Palestinians. We can make it easier for them. Now, if you are living in a small village, let's say, called Biddu, which is outside Jerusalem, and you can't go to the doctor, which is 10 minutes away in, in the hospital, in Jerusalem, and you have to go to Ramallah, passing a few checkpoints, then you could laugh at me and say, okay, you only want an easier occupation. But if I'm telling you that many of these checkpoints are unnecessary, they are unnecessary hardship, let's take them away. So from a Palestinian point of view, from a nationalistic point of view, you might say, well, this is very nice for you. You will have um, you will have an easy occupation, everything will be nice, but you will still be occupied. Yes, I will still be occupied, but life will be more livable for the Palestinians. And life for the Palestinians is so difficult today that even if you start by making it easier, you have achieved something. So this is very little. This is uh, not big idealism. It's a very apolitical thing I'm saying, but I think we have reached the point, unfortunately, the situation is so bad that the best you can do is to make life more livable. General Petraeus at a Senate hearing said that a resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is in a direct American national interest, that American soldiers are being killed in Iraq and Afghanistan right. because this issue doesn't get settled. A lot of analysts said that was very important rhetoric coming from Petraeus and, and it wasn't just he sent some of his other generals out to say the same thing to other congressmen and senators. Um, and, and the idea being, is, I guess the question is, is there a point where U.S. interest really is for a two-state solution in order to have U uh, manage American relations in the Arab world, and, and, there, and there's a real divergence of interest with Israel, which you say is not ready for this, um, or do you think that's all theater? No, I think it's, uh, it is in, in the American interest to have a two-state solution. And, can yes. they make and I think it's also in the Israeli interest to have a two-state solution. But the problem is that in your question, you say Israeli interest, and you really mean the policy of the government of Israel. All right? That's not the same thing. I think that the Israeli government at the moment is not representing the true interest of the state of Israel. So that's our tragedy for, for, for many years. But I belong to a very small minority that the government does represent the majority of Israelis, just as the Palestinians make a lot of mistakes, and they represent a majority of, of the Palestinians, at least on the West Bank, not in Gaza. I can understand why, um, by the way, he retracted that statement, I think, uh, Petraeus, uh, in, in a conversation with Barak, his Israeli defense minister, a few days ago. But uh, yes, it makes sense for the Americans to say, uh, we really need to get rid of that problem between the Israelis and the Palestinians, also uh, in view of the Iranian threat and in view of the other problems we have in Iraq and in Afghanistan or wherever. Yes, let's settle that. I just think that in a way it's very naive and many American presidents start out by believing that they will solve the conflict, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. They have been able to bring us to peace with Egypt. They have been able to bring Hussein to peace with Israel. And so we have peace with Jordan. As I said, I think that American pressure might lead to peace between Israel and Syria. 
But the problem with the Palestinians, I think, is beyond the ability of the United States government to achieve, even if they put very heavy pressure on, on Israel. So, even if there's uh, a threat to subsidies? So I, I, I would love there to be very heavy pressure on Israel to ease the situation, to lift some of the restrictions, to diminish some of the violation of the human rights of the Palestinians. That is, I think, something the Americans can do and also the Europeans can do. But to think that within two years, as they talk, this is a repetition of the road map of, of President the, Bush. The, the, the general feeling has been that if the, I mean, if the United States were actually willing to, and there's a lot of question whether they want to, threaten the three to four billion dollars of years of subsidy, dollars a, a year that go to Israel, uh, is that kind of pressure going to make the difference? I don't know that that's a, a, a realistic question. These, these uh, billions of dollars are, in fact, going back to many of them are going back to America in terms of weapon productions and, and all that. So there are so many people in America who are interested in that. So I don't think that it's realistic. Also, many, many, many Americans support um, the basic views of the government of Israel. And their number is increasing, especially among fundamental Christians uh, in, in America. And uh, so these are people who, who, who support the basic views of the government of Israel and, and they cannot be, cannot be ignored. So it's not merely about the Israel lobby or the Jewish vote or something. It's a very, very widespread support among the American public. And so I think that um, an American president is limited also from that point of view. But as I said, you've already understood this by now, but I'm very pessimistic. And so I think that rather than aiming at a final peace agreement, we should uh, aim at making life more livable. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.